727 just rammed into the building. When United Flight 175 struck the South Tower at 9.03, Wells Crowther was on the 104th floor. He was a 24-year-old equities trader. He was also a volunteer firefighter in his hometown of Nyack. Somehow, he found an escape route past the inferno below and made three round trips up and down the stairs, carrying and leading survivors to safety. Wells' body was found six months later. Had uh, his life continued after September 11th? When I talked with his devastated parents in 2002, they had just learned what their son had done. It was a wonderful feeling to, to have this confirmed and to know that, that, his, that he acted in such a courageous and wonderful way. He was acting as a firefighter at the last hour of his life. He wasn't an equities trader anymore. He was a firefighter. I weep every day for my son, every day. 15 years after their loss, the pain is still just below the surface. It's always there. I wouldn't say it's eased, but I've learned how to live with it. The first year I was, I had such physical pain, it was doing physical damage to my, to my body. The emotional, the emotional pain. Um, I just realized that I had to steal up and just put it someplace. Every now and then I just break out in uncontrollable sobs, more in earlier years than now. But I just try to keep focused on the good of his story and the good that his story is bringing. His legacy lives on through the dedication of family, friends, and former teammates. There was a red bandana football game and run at Boston College, Wells alma mater. A Wells Crowther Charitable Trust that grants scholarships. An annual Red Bandana Heroes Award. A documentary soon to be released called Man in Red Bandana. A Red Bandana book. And closest to Allison's heart, the Red Bandana Project, offering lessons to school children internationally. In your lectures that you give around the world now, you talk a lot about love and forgiveness. Yes, that's right. Have you forgiven the 9-11 hijackers? No. I'm sorry. I can't go that far. Last July, Allison and Jeff traveled to the military detention camp in Guantanamo Bay, Cuba, to witness a military tribunal hearing for captured terrorists. The Crowthers came face to face with 9-11 mastermind Khalid Sheikh Mohammed and four co-conspirators. They have confessed to, the, to their actions and they and, and arrogantly said that, you know, if allowed to do it again, they would. So I can't, I can't forgive them. No, not at all. They took our 24-year-old son from us. Both are frustrated that after all these years, none of them have been tried and sentenced. Bring them to justice. That's what we want, just swift justice. If justice is elusive, some measure of peace, at least, is not. The Crowthers find it here, near their son's name. I never miss an opportunity to stop over here and say hello to my son. To me, it's a perfect representation of, of the spirit and it's very soothing. Two years ago, when the 9-11 Museum right behind us was dedicated, Wells was the centerpiece of President Obama's speech. He led those survivors down the stairs to safety and carried a woman on his shoulders down 17 flights. And then he went back. It was absolutely stunning. Me. It was so moving, so beautiful. I was so proud of Wells. I would trade every bit of that pride to have him standing right here with us right now. But I was so very proud of him. And I knew that the world was looking at him. And the world was seeing what a fine young man he was. The designers of the 9-11 memorial called it reflecting absence, the water descending into the earth and vanishing. The names etched in voids instead of raised letters, symbolizing all we lost. But reflect for a moment on the names that are not there, the lives saved. On that day of consummate evil, Wells Crowther and the hundreds of others who responded so heroically at the cost of their own lives taught us something valuable, something necessary about our common humanity. Chuck Scarborough, News 4 New York.